We welcome you to 2019 KCSE Chemistry Paper 2, Question 6, Testing on Electrochemistry. 6, Part A. What is meant by standard electrode potential of an element? So, Standard electrode potential of an, of an element simply refers to the potential difference the potential difference sorry between between a standard hydrogen half cell this we know it's E naught is set at zero zero so the potential difference between a standard hydrogen half cell and a half cell of an element containing one mole per liter of ions of that element measured at 25 degrees celsius or 298 kelvin and one atmosphere pressure that is the meaning of standard electrode potential of an element part b we have been given standard electrode potentials or standard reduct reduction potentials of some reactions here as shown below we have manganate 7 being reduced to manganese 2 e naught is given here an element m3 being reduced to m2 e naught an element N2 being reduced to N, E0 in volts is also given here. Element P2 being reduced to P, E0 given as well. Then we have a gas Q being reduced to Q ions. And lastly, we have another gas R being reduced to R ions. Now, for all questions that have to do with standard electrode potentials, I always advise my students to remember a very simple tagline, which goes like this. The reaction with the most positive, or the element with the most positive E0, or even the half cell with the most positive E0, is actually the strongest oxidizing agent this is all a student need to remember now oxidizing agents we all know they normally get reduced in reactions then reaction now normally takes place at the cathode of a complete cell and when we are drawing the cell representation this cathode is always put on the right hand side this is the tagline that will help any student to answer any question as far as standard electrode potentials are concerned it is my prayer that we all remember it and for the most negative e naught, it is just the opposite of what we have written here so most negative E0 value, strongest reducing agent, gets oxidized, forms anode, and is placed on the left-hand side. That is the opposite of what we have here. So, to the first question. State whether acidified manganate 7 ions can oxidize M2. Give a reason. To answer this, let's just check the E value, the E naught value. You realize manganate 7 has a higher E naught value than M3. And for that matter, 
the oxidation will take place. So the answer here is a simple yes, or a student can write that manganate seven ions will oxidize M2 to M3 for the first mark. Continue to give us a reason that M or rather manganate seven ions has a higher, it has a higher E naught value than M3 for the next mark. Quite easy if you know our tagline. Question two. Select two half cells which when combined gives the highest EMF. Here we shall choose the half cell with the most positive and go again for the one with the most negative. So looking at our standard electrode potentials, the most positive is Q and the most negative is P. So the answer here is quite easy. Simply tell us half cell Q and P. A student can also have the option of giving us the representations for the half cells. So we shall have Q2 gas forward stroke 2Q ions which according to our equations is still gas and for P we have P solid forward stroke P2 plus. Remember students that half cells are represented as element stroke element ions. This we have taught you very well in class. So you could say Q and P as simple as that or you can give us the representations of the two uh, half cells. Now, write the cell representation for the cell formed in B above. Here, we have to follow the rule and the rule is that the one that will have the most positive E not will have to be on the right hand side which means the one with the most negative will have to be the one to start with it has to be the one on the left hand side because it is the one that will be oxidized so if you have mastered this tagline answering that question becomes so easy we have to start with the one with the most negative to be on our left hand side. And you realize this is P. So we shall have P solid, P ions, and then we now put our salt bridge represented by two vertical lines, and then we introduce now the one that will be reduced, and that is our Q. So Q, we have agreed has been represented as gas. So this becomes your cell representation. The rule is you must start with the anode, the one that undergoes oxidation. Then salt bridge, move to the cathode, the one that undergoes reduction. Understood. Then we are asked to calculate the E value for the above cell. The answer here is E naught for the cell is given by E reduced half cell minus E oxidized half cell. We have reduced Q. Q has E naught of positive 2.87 and we have oxidized P. P has E naught of negative 0 0.23. So when you do the subtraction, you end up with E cell of positive 3.10 volts. One mark for the subtraction, one mark for the answer. 
but if the units are missing, you only get half a mark. Part C, tested on quantitative treatment of electrolysis, the Faraday's law. And we are asked, a mass of 1.24 grams of divalent metal, divalent here will be very useful in our calculations, was deposited when a current of 6 amperes or amperes was passed through a solution of the metal sulfate for 12 minutes, determine the RAM of the metal. So here, we begin with calculating the quantity of electricity involved. And it is given by current in amperes multiplied by time in seconds. So our current is 6 amperes. We passed through the sulfate for 12 minutes, which we have to multiply by another 60 to change into seconds. And that gives 4320 coulombs. A half for the multiplication, a half for the answer. Next, we have to use the information given here to help us out. So we shall argue this way, that if 4,320 coulombs is able to give us only 1.24 grams. What about 2 Faradays? 2 Faradays would be 2 times 96,500 coulombs. This would give us how much? And the value we shall get here would be the answer. The value we get here would be the relative atomic mass of the metal. Why? Because we shall get a mass equivalent to one mole of the metal. The argument is we have been told the metal is divalent. So it means two Faradays are needed to deposit one mole of it. And two Faradays is equivalent to two multiplied by 96,500 coulombs. So doing cross multiplication, we shall have 2 times 96,500 times 1.24 divided by 4,320. And this gives us 55.4. We don't put G because this is relative atomic mass. It doesn't have units. So a half for that argument that one mole equivalent to the relative atomic mass of the metal would be deposited by two Faradays, half a mark for that, half a mark for multiplication by 1.24, half a mark for division by 43.20, and a half a mark for the final answer without the units. Lastly, we are asked to state two applications of electrolysis. Electrolysis has so many uses or so many applications. We can use it for decoration of metals to improve on appearance. We also have purification of metals. We also have extraction of this time reactive metals. All these are applications of electrolysis. We have manufacture of sodium hydroxide. We also have manufacture of chlorine gas and this goes hand in hand with hydrogen gas. We have something called sacrificial or others call it cathodic protection as an application of electrolysis. We also have electroplating and last but not least we have anodizing of aluminium. All these are applications of electrolysis. A student was supposed to pick only two for one mark. We have come to the end of that question and we want to thank you for your time.
We wish you all the best in your revision and don't forget to keep it right here for more.